Kramer Media in Johannesburg, this is The Real Economy Report. The effects of global warming are driving the case for electric vehicles, or EVs, such as the latest zero emissions EV from global vehicle manufacturer Nissan, the much anticipated LEAF 2. Tracy Hancock attended the launch in Japan. Launched on September 6 in Japan, the LEAF 2 is said to be a real alternative to conventional vehicles as the 40 kilowatt hour EV offers a 400 kilometer range, 40% greater than that of the original LEAF. The vehicle will be sold at the same price point of its predecessor, with Nissan at this point looking to introduce the LEAF 2 to the Southern African market in the last quarter of the 2018 calendar year. However, this has yet to be confirmed. The new Nissan LEAF drives Nissan Intelligent Mobility, which is the core brand strategy for Nissan's future, said Nissan President and CEO Hiroto Sikawa at the launch. The dynamic design of the LEAF 2 is head and shoulders above that of its predecessor. Nissan notes that the philosophy behind the exterior design was to express clean and simple lines and a robust and sleek silhouette, creating the feeling of a high-tech device. The new zero-emission Nissan LEAF embodies Nissan Intelligent Mobility, the company's approach to changing the way cars are driven, powered and integrated into society. The three key aspects of intelligent mobility exemplified by the LEAF 2 are intelligent power, intelligent driving, and intelligent integration. The focal point of Nissan Intelligent Power in the new LEAF is the e-powertrain, which offers improved energy efficiency and increased torque and power output of 110 kilowatts, 38% more than the previous generation Nissan LEAF. Torque has been increased by 26% to 320 newton meters, resulting in improved acceleration. Nissan's intelligent driving technology is exemplified by its ProPilot, ProPilot Park, and ePedal. ProPilot is a single-lane autonomous driving technology that can automatically control the distance to the vehicle in front, using a speed preset by the driver. It can also help the driver steer and keep the vehicle centered in its lane. If the car in front stops, the ProPilot system will automatically apply the brakes to bring the vehicle to a full stop if necessary. After coming to a full stop, the vehicle can remain in place even if the driver's foot is off the brake. If traffic restarts, the car will resume driving when the driver touches the switch again or lightly presses the accelerator to activate ProPilot. ProPilot Park helps drivers park by automatically controlling the LEAF 2's acceleration, brakes, handling, shift changing and parking brakes to guide the car into a parking spot. ProPilot Park combines advanced image processing technology using four high resolution cameras and information from 12 ultrasonic sensors around the car. The e-pedal allows the driver the simplicity of starting, accelerating, decelerating, stopping and holding the car by using the accelerator pedal. By simply releasing the accelerator, the car will come to a smooth and complete stop and hold without the need to press the brake pedal, eliminating the need for drivers to constantly move their foot from the accelerator to the brake pedal to slow down or stop. This helps reduce fatigue and increases enjoyment. Says Nissan. The production of the LEAF 2, which has just started at Nissan's Opama plant in Yokohama, Japan, begins with the stamping of large body panels from steel sheets between 0.55 mm and 2 mm thick. One roll of steel yields body panels for 300 vehicles. The largest press at Opama is 500 tons. The next step involves body assembly, during which the vehicle shape is formed. The highly automated Opama plant comprises 500 welding machines with 3,000 spot welds needed on the new leaf. Thereafter, the body is sent to the paint shop, coating the body in paint 0.1 mm thick. The assembly of the leaf too involves the installation of 3,000 parts, with this part of the production process less than 10% automated. The final stage is inspection, during which Nissan conducts 700 tests, including the inspection of the chassis, 
engine components, electric function, and the exterior and interior. For customers who want more excitement and performance, Nissan will also offer a more powerful version with a longer range at a higher price in 2018. The new Nissan LEAF will go on sale on October 2 in Japan. The model is slated for deliveries in January in the US, Canada and Europe. Other news making headlines, local data center and hosting company Terraco Data Environments is building a hyperscale data center in Kempton Park in Johannesburg to serve regional hosting and cloud demand. Skalkberger has the details. Terraco's new 24 megawatt 6,000 square meter Riverfields hyperscale data center will open in November. Construction on the data center had begun in January. The data center comprises six data center halls, each with about 900 square meters of technical deployment space and 100 square meters of storage space. It represents about 20% of the South African-based outsourced hosting capacity and will see the company investing $100 million over two years as the data center gains clients. Each of the six 4MVA Terraco Energy modules supplies power to a single data center hall and each hall has its own set of chillers to feed cold air to the cabinets. The 150 meter long double story data center facility is designed to use free cooling to reduce energy consumption when the ambient temperature is below a certain threshold. Terraco CFO Jan Nisdo provides the commercial context for the investment in the new data center. Power is important because power is how we kind of gauge the size of, of data centers. This data center particularly has got 24 megawatts um, and it's the largest data center in Africa. And if we take the size of this data center relative to the South African outsource market, it probably represents about 20% of that capacity. So in, in, in terms of the African market, it's a really large data center. In terms of the sou Southern Hemisphere, the larger data centers typically cap out at around about 36 megawatts. So even in the context of the Southern Hemisphere, this is going to be a large data center. Over probably the next two years, in this site specifically, we're going to invest in, in the region of about $100 million. Uh, not all at once, so the idea is we built out the civil structure as you see we, we're doing now. That'll get taken to its end state and then what we roll out in phases is the power plants and the halls. The whole data center space uh, with cloud coming to, to the African continent, there's obviously great demand. Well, we see demand and we're trying to build, build in anticipation of the demand. I think. Uh, I think all the major cloud players at, at some point in the next couple of years are going, to, are going to want to deploy here in South Africa. So it's a fantastic opportunity for us and, and we'd like to be well placed to take advantage of that. In the context of the normal data center market, it's been growing in the region of the high teens. This is going to be something completely new. So we haven't yet seen large cloud scale deployments coming to South Africa. So this will be something in addition to, in addition to that demand. The way to look at a large data center like this, it's, it's, it's a regional deployment. So the customers that would typically deploy here would service an entire region. So if, if you look at, for instance, America or Europe, you'll probably find two or three data centers service those markets. And this would be fairly similar here. It would be difficult for large cloud providers to start putting um, you know, individual data centers in each African country the demand is probably not that great. Whereas from here you can have kind of get economies of scale and service the entire market from one base. So we look at the sub-Saharan Africa as our market and we basically promote this data center as being able to service that market. That's Crema Media's Real Economy Report. Join us again next week for more news and insights into South Africa's real economy.